Hello and welcome to Photo Education Online. I'm Larry Lursey and today I'm going to talk to you about layer masks. Layer masks are something if you're just starting out in Photoshop you might not have even heard of them. Um, I know when I started out I had never used layer masks. I, I wasn't really sure what it was and so I just worked around it but it's really a powerful tool if you can learn how to do it and get comfortable with it. Uh, you have a lot more options. So first of all let me explain a little bit about how a layer mask works. If you look over here, I've got three layers set up. I've got a basic white at the bottom, I've got this texture in the middle, on top is a picture of my model. Now, uh, if you know how layers work, basically because this layer is turned on and the opacity is at 100%, you cannot see the layer below it. And what the layer mask does, it allows you to see through this layer down to the next layer. Here's how we would use it. Let's say you wanted to take this model and have her on this background instead of the gray. You got a few different options. The easy one, I guess, is you just come over here and grab the erase tool and you just go in. I'm going to do just a really sloppy, fast job here, so you don't have to sit here and watch me do it. But really quick, I could just take the eraser, erase out this background over here, and essentially we've done it. If we look, those pixels are gone, so now we're seeing through to the layer below it. And that's fine. The problem you have with that is once those pixels are gone, they're generally gone. And what happens if a week for, week or two later you come back and you open this file up and you're like, man, I think I came in too far on this arm. You've got no option because that stuff is gone. There's no way to bring it back. It's Basically, it's called destructive editing. You've gotten rid of those pixels. And that's not really the optimal way of doing it. It, it, it gets the job done, but in really about the same amount of work I could have a lot more options. Let me get back here start over again. Another thing we could do is this is probably how I would have done it when I first started out in Photoshop. I would have just taken the magic wand, select over here, hold down shift, select over here, and hit delete. Get rid of the ants there. There we go. Same thing. We've cleaned all this out so we can see through to the uh, background and it it accomplished our goal we got through where we can see her on this background and that's great the problem we have is if we decide you know what I want to go back to that gray or maybe I cut in too much over here there's no option to do that because it's gone we would have to go back to the original file which is gonna be a lot more work to try and bring back a piece of hair or the gray background or whatever so you can see why that is not really the most efficient way of working. What the layer mask does is it allows you to paint in an area and lets it see through to the next layer without getting rid of it. Let me show you how it works. Right here is the layer mask button. If you hit that button, it pops up this little box with the chain right next to your layer. Now here's my layer. Click on that and you can see how it moves between the two. And there's a difference. You want to be on this layer when you work on it. Make sure you've got a uh, black, you can see it's all white right now. White means that it's not doing anything. It's letting everything, uh, or rather it's letting nothing show through. Switch to black. Now when I take my uh, paintbrush here with, with black, set to black over here, now it's, it's showing through. And if you will watch over here while I'm doing this, you can see that it is showing up black on the mask. It's showing you those are the areas that you have painted black on the mask to let everything show through. And now again we've got the same thing. It didn't take me any longer to paint over here but now I've done a mask. And over here's again a thumbnail. Here's one of the things that will mess you up is if you accidentally click on this and then you paint black now you're actually painting black on top of her which we don't necessarily want. So you always want to make sure that you've got the mask. So you can see here that we're seeing through to the next layer which is good and if we delete turn these off you can see it appears that it's gone but it's actually all still there it's just being covered up by the mask. So what's cool is if I accidentally came in too far like that and I didn't catch it and you know a week later I pull up this file and said oh my gosh I cut into her arm. All I have to do because the white is the part that is not showing through switch to a white brush here and I can come right back in and add that arm just like that or I can go say well you know I, I did too much now there's gray 
switch back to black and I can just start trimming it down like that. So it gives me a lot more options to bounce back and forth by using this mask. And as you can see here, kind of from the thumbnail, all that information is still there. Even if I do this and it appears to completely mask out her arm, I haven't really deleted her arm because if you see here, it's still there. It's just being hidden by the mask. All I have to do is switch to white and I can bring the arm back just like that. So it's really a lot more powerful to do it that way. And uh, one of the things you can also do, which is kind of a cool little thing with, with masks, let me get back to my original again, is let's say you, um, we'll just take the lasso tool and go through and do a really quick sloppy selection of her. Okay. So we've, we've selected our model, kind of. Now, if, if while she's selected, you'd go in here and hit this layer mask button, it automatically reads your selection and, and builds a mask based on that. Now all I have to do, switch to my black brush, and go in here and start cleaning up the gray areas. You know, like that. And again, if I cut off, uh-oh, went too far on the arm, switch to the white, and go back and forth. The biggest thing with layer masks is getting your head wrapped around which is white and which is black. If it's like, okay, I need to get rid of that gray. Do I need a white brush or do I need a, a black brush? And once you get to, okay, black is what gets rid of the stuff, white is what brings it back, then uh, it's a little easier. But that'll confuse you sometimes. But if you can remember the black and the white and then also to make sure that you've got the layer mask selected and not the actual layer you will find that it's a really powerful tool and uh, it it really gives you a lot of options when you're compositing things together and anytime that you would normally erase something off a layer you can use the uh, layer mask instead so it's a very powerful tool and that's just a very basic introduction to it but try it out try out the button and, and try masking things and trying the black and white brushes back and forth and, and see how it works and I think you'll you'll find that it's a uh, very exciting tool and it works really well once you kind of get good at doing selections and one of the things we're gonna do next week is actually work on selecting and trying to pull things off the background by getting really nice selections and uh, one more quick thing before I let you go the one other kinda cool thing about the layer mask is when you've done all this work and you decide you know what I'm just gonna go back to the gray I can just grab this layer mask drag it to the trash, hit delete, and I'm right back to my original file just like it was. I can just throw the whole thing away and forget about it. So it's really cool and handy. So I hope you'll give it a try. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, check back, we, uh, check back next week and we'll work on doing selections. Thanks a bunch. See you later. Bye-bye.